But first, I want to just get our listeners familiar with Jake Harris. Who are you? What do you do? So let's start with our first question, Jake. What do you invest in? So yeah, that's an interesting question because I have been an investor for 20 years and I've invested into a lot of different things over the course of those 20 years. It, it, it primarily or initially started as single family houses and flipping those. And then I, I kind of built that out at scale. And so we did, I think, uh, I don't know, 12, 1300 flips across 23 states. Uh, we aggregated some single family rental portfolios that we sold off to the uh, institutional investors, the Invitation Homes, Colony Capital, Tricon and, and the likes. Um, and, and actually I got kind of a job offer to run an acquisitions for one of these big funds because they said, Hey, the portfolios we bought of yours were, uh, some of the best. And, and, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to you to run that. So I actually, you know, felt like that was the, my tap on the shoulder to go run my, and set up my own private equity real estate company. And so, uh, since that time in the last seven, eight years has been primarily focused on commercial real estate. I do land entitlement buying infill stuff, rezoning it, uh, buy a, lot, a handful of historic buildings and do adaptive reuse. So converting those from like an office and moving them to multifamily. And then we do some ground up construction, uh, apartment, hotel and others. And so it kind of is a, is a, a gambit of things, but specifically it's to some markets that I'm really, really bullish on because of the demographics. And I'm a really a data-driven investor. And so I am very bullish on the market. And then I'm looking for good deals, a little bit more agnostic to the specific deals uh, in those particular markets. And that is mostly Central Texas. Right on. You got your hands in a lot of different fires. It's, it's not like you got a lot of irons in the fire. You got a lot of different fires with different irons. And I uh, think, you know, that's, that is a great strategy to be successful in an ever-changing market, especially if you're, you know, you're highly successful in one of them. And you've got a lot of systems set up and it's kind of automated and you can move to something else and start on something else. Um, love the idea of, of what you're doing with the mixed use and redeveloping uh, something old and making it new. And I love that idea. Um, I think it's a great idea. I wish I had the tools and tricks to do that. I, I can learn. I'm going to read Catching Knives and, and figure out how I can implement that into uh, mine and my wife's business here in Georgia. So you, you answered that a little bit at the end in Texas, but you also said you've done work over 23 different states. So where is your primary focus of investing? Yeah. So from that, you know, people say, hey, you do a lot of different things. Well, really, it depends on the investment bucket that mm -hmm. we're investing out of. And so that is oftentimes led with an investment thesis and in our business plan. So sometimes these are cash flow. These are long-term holds. These are, you know, ground up projects. And so those individual collective group of investors, you know, are kind of driving that uh, overall business plan. And so that was one of the big things um, that I discovered is, is initially being kind of opportunistic and just trying to find a good deal was what got me into real estate. And, and so I was actually casting too wide of a net residential and single family houses were like the easiest thing to get into because I could, uh, on my own money invest into them. And then as I kind of scaled, I need to bring on a few other, uh, particular investors, uh, specifically, you know, in 2012, Blackstone came into the market and, uh, you know, really started buying, you know, invitation homes started buying a lot of houses at scale, hundreds, thousands of properties, and they were actually paying over market value. So if a house, and I'll give you an example, it was a $200,000 house at the time, that's what it was worth. You know, they were coming in and paying $250,000 for a house. And it was like, mm -hmm. This doesn't make sense. Like, why would you pay $250,000 for a house that's only worth $200,000 and you still had to fix it up? You still had to do all of these other things. And really what I, I, I go back to is they were playing a different game. They were investing on an investment in a business plan that was based on a previous peak price. And so they're like, we're willing to pay up to 70% of previous peak price. So if that home was previously worth $500,000, we'll pay up to $350,000, you know, at all in cost 
and be great because we think it's going to shoulder off of that previous high, go to there and go above that. So even though today's pricing was $200,000, they didn't care about what today's yeah. pricing was. They were buying things kind of by the pound. And yeah. so that is again, part of it goes back to is understanding your business plan in which you're going to ultimately kind of execute. It gives you a lot tighter constraints of what you can and cannot do within your investment theories. And this is what I, I talk to a lot of people about is you need to first define what you want to do. Get very, very crystal clear, laser-like focus, use a buy box or investment thesis or some kind of criteria. And it allows you to say no to a lot more deals. And so if you go on and log on to MLS or Crexy or CoStar or LoopNet or any one of these things, and then you're just looking for a good deal, what you get is a little bit of mental masturbation as far as because you just look and it's, it's just, oh, this is a good deal. And this is here and it's in Ohio and then it's in Georgia and this one's over in you know Alabama and I'm going to go and look at all these things. So because you haven't really defined what it is that your business plan is, you get you know overwhelmed. And so yeah. it allows you to basically to procrastinate. And going back to like, we had a, a particular investment thesis on on a market on central Texas based on here's the population growth. Here's the job growth. Here's the affordability index. Here's the other thing. So our investment criteria is specifically from Austin to San Antonio, from Austin to San Antonio. Now we're looking for if it's a land deal or if it's commercial or something along those lines that we have skill sets in, mm -hmm. then we know that this is what, because our investment thesis was, was based on the market fundamentals. And that was really based on, if you and just invest in like the top performing market from last year, like you have a 98% chance of success, just reinvesting into that market. And I've seen this and done this in the past. I overpaid for assets, not because I wanted to, but the market momentum actually moved it. And so it's like, you can be Michael Phelps of swimming, you know, Michael Phelps, and you're trying to swim against the waves, against the, the, the current. And you have to just be incredibly skilled to do that Olympic, you know, level swimmer. Or what you can do is just get your little boogie board and get in front of the waves and have the market momentum go with you. And then you don't have to be as good. And then obviously in our, at least my buy box, I'm a value investor. I'm looking and I'm trying to buy stuff that's worth a dollar. I'm trying to buy it for 70 or 80 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. And then that's where it's, it's kind of playing out to. So central Texas, San Antonio is the market that I've been really, really focused on the last several years. And that's kind of adapted and changes as the fundamentals of real estate have changed as invent interest rates, as you know, population clients have moved around. We have the ability, even though some of these are long-term holds, but then as new acquisitions are coming in, we're evaluating those kind of annually and looking into it. Like, is this still, do we still believe in this investment thesis or do we want to do more of those? Do we want to raise more capital around those? And, and specifically, and there's also some other things that we're not necessarily focused on, on San Antonio that we're going to be rolling on to into the near future.